So Mike Ravel is trying to make the debate stage for the next Democratic debate. Um, and his team released this ad, which I'm told actually ran on MSNBC. Take a look. I have the most progressive record of anybody running. Mr. President, I will vote to authorize the use of military force against Iraq. I do not believe this is a rush to war. I believe it's a march to peace and security. I do not view abortion as a choice or a right. I do not vote for funding for abortion. The concept of busing that we are going to integrate people is a rejection of the whole movement of black pride. Both political parties will understand the need for more police officers of more prisons. We have predators on our streets. We have no choice but to take them out of society. I don't think 500 billionaires are the reason why we're in trouble. The folks at the top aren't bad guys. I have the most progressive record of anybody running. I'm Mike Gravel, and I approve this message. That was a good ad. I would have added as well... The thing that he said about Paul Ryan being right when it comes to cutting Social Security and Medicare, I think that that's uh, equally as powerful and it deserves to be in there. But nonetheless, it's still a good ad and he's, you know, he's trying to expose Joe Biden to an audience that's probably being spoon-fed spoon the idea that Joe Biden is awesome. Um, so Mike Ravel is an interesting character. Now, he announced a run... A while ago now, and what's hilarious is he's actually polling better than a lot <laughs> than a lot of candidates who are like really being taken seriously by mainstream media. I think in one poll he was ahead of Kirsten Gillibrand. He was at like one percent or two percent, and you had like you know Kirsten Gillibrand and and some others at zero percent, which is kind of hilarious because the main catch here is that Mike Ravel has said, um, or his team has said, I don't know which, that he's not. He's not running to win. He's just running to be an issues candidate to get on the debate stage to push certain issues. Now, um, some people have disagreed with me on this, but I really, really, really dislike that kind of stuff. I hate that I'm not running to win people because it is by definition a gimmick. What you're doing is a gimmick. You don't actually want to be president. You're not actually trying to win. You're just doing a gimmicky thing, okay? Okay. So, and, and if you think, hey, that's not cool, Kyle, he's your ideological ally to some extent. Yeah, but so was Lawrence Lessig in, when he ran for president in 2016. And the second he hopped in the race, I was like, what are you doing? Because he's another guy, his whole thing was like, it was actually a little different than Gravel. Uh, Larry Lessig said, no, I am running to win. But my only issue is getting money out of politics. And the second I get money out of politics, I will step down. So I'm a single issue guy. This is the only issue. Corruption is the only issue that really matters because it affects all other issues. So the second I get that done, I will step down. And everybody was just like, what the fuck? What? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Yeah, we get it. Corruption is bad. But what are you doing? And at the time, Bernie Sanders was already in the race. And it was like, why don't... It just seems ridiculous that you're running and it's it's just too gimmicky. There's too much going on around it to run and say, oh, I'm just trying to get in the debates to push certain issues. And okay, what are those issues? Well, for Mike Gravel, one of the main ones is foreign policy. And it's like, okay, well, there's also Bernie and Tulsi Gabbard who are saying the exact same things and they actually have a chance. So for you to say, it just really rubs me the wrong way when people say, I'm not trying to win. Okay, then get out. <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? That's ridiculous. Um, and then also the thing is, and this is a, this is a, something I've struggled with for a long time is what do you do when you have somebody who says a lot of the things that are right and make sense, but they, they make it so easy to caricature them. It happened with Dennis Kucinich. He's a great guy. He's right about a lot of stuff. And then he ran for president. And the second he got on the debate stage, it was like, Hey, remember that time you said you believed in aliens and you saw aliens? And his response was like, beep, 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 and he just shot himself in the foot. And it's like, hey, dude, listen, bro, if you're going to run for president and you're right on a lot of the issues, do me a favor. Even if you think you saw some fucking aliens, put that in your back pocket and uh, shut the fuck up about it. Because when they delegitimize you by saying you're the alien guy, guess what? Now, without even trying, they've successfully dragged all the issues that you care deeply about that you're right about and they you've self-marginalized them. 
So because you're so silly in some other ways, they've now self-marginalized you because now people go, oh, well, Dennis Kucinich also wants single payer and he also wants to end the wars and like kooky beliefs, just like fucking seeing aliens. So there are some people who are just not the best messengers to actually win. And what I care about is fucking winning. Now, having said all that, Mike Ravel's a good guy, man. He's a hero in many respects. If I'm not mistaken, he's the guy who read the Pentagon Papers into the congressional record, which proved how we were, the U.S. was doing war crimes, using Agent Orange on innocent villagers and bombing innocent villagers. And so I have nothing against the guy personally. In fact, I think he's wonderful, and I would agree with him on many, many things. I just really don't like the I'm running and I'm not trying to win thing. Now, having said that, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think he may have just qualified for the next debate, and many others have done it as well. And I think what Gravel's goal will be is to just totally take out the establishment hacks. He will try his best to take out the establishment hacks. And we'll see how that goes. I hope that he succeeds in, you know, basically being a bull in a china shop and taking out Kamala and taking out Joe Biden. But I'm actually not totally sure he's in the next debates yet. So I don't know. I guess go to his website to check to see if he's in the next debates. And if you want to see him in the debates, then go ahead and, you know, donate a dollar or whatever it may be to get him into the next debates. Um, but nonetheless, that's my breakdown. And then also, apparently they said they're going to use the funds, like whatever leftover funds he has, they're going to use it to go to Flint, Michigan. Well, if that's true, then that's wonderful. And I give them a lot of credit. Um, and I hope that they do that. But again, it's like two teens are running his campaign. And I don't know. I don't know who they are. I don't know if I trust them. And I know you're not allowed to question these things in lefty circles. But this, these are my actual thoughts. I don't know what's going on. It just seems a little fishy to me that two teens popped up out of nowhere and they're running a campaign where the guy's not trying to win. And it's like, what? Do you, what? I don't get it. I just don't get it. But listen, my cynicism and my skepticism can be dead wrong. And maybe they're just wonderful people. And maybe they really are just trying to push these important issues. And maybe they are just trying to take that money and um, donate a lot of it to Flint, Michigan. That's certainly possible. That's certainly one of the things on the table here. So um, either way, that was a fantastic ad from Mike Ravel and his team. And um, the money is certainly not all being wasted if that's what it's going towards. If it's going towards these like ads that try to eviscerate the worst of the corporate candidates 